to make this water bottle float. Am I doing a good job? Dude, it's Whoa, working. Oh, it's floating. There it goes. Come back, come back. Whoa, how do you do it, Matt? How do you do it? It's my green glove. My green glove, see? Ooh, ooh. How do you do it? Do it some more, do it some more. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Magic. Uh, my name is Matt Gleason. This is my show, Modern Art Blitz, produced and directed by Abel Alejandre in the booth here at Dronebox Studios. Dronebox.com streams all sorts of fun footage throughout the week for your entertainment needs, desires, and wants. Are all wants desires? <laughs> I don't know. It seems anyway. like it's filling a niche that uh, public access studios. It's you know. a big niche. Hey. My first guest today, later in the show, actually, will be Sean Capone and Jennifer Feist. But right now, is a semi-legend, uh, a cult hero. There's other things I could call him. Asshole. Oh, I did not say that. I'm announcing my retirement, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Alex Schaefer. Uh, hi. Hey, Good how you doing, on, Alex? Good to be on the show, man. Great to have you, man. Great I, to have you. I want to just say I, I appreciate uh, more and more everything that you do oh, for, well, hey. for the art world. Well, I'm just trying to kick ass and take names, baby. So, uh, Alex, uh, well, we're, now we're looking. There's a, we're already floating in one of your paintings. Yes. This is a, a downtown L.A. street scene. What, what, year, what year was this? This was probably over, I don't know, 18 months working on it on and off. What plane air is supposed to be fast? You're supposed to get in there, whip it out? Well, I know, but there's also like, there's the speed and the amount of time that you do have to work with the sun moving. Oh, uh, so you had to come back at like one Yeah, but then you could bring it back and, and the next day or a, a week later or whatever. And then you have to go like a little and, later each day or a little earlier, depending um, on where the sun is, right? I mean, on this painting, I actually was in the middle of the street when I started it because I did it during Bisaclavia. And so they had blocked off Spring or Broadway here. And so I just had an easel in the middle. But then um, it was a perspective that I would just, I, when I, whenever I bring it back, I would be on the sidewalk from one side to the other. So For those of you who don't know, this is downtown LA. Yes. Okay? Very important city, a very important part of a city. Um, hey, so uh, let, let, me, let me ask you something. You know, plain air has kind of, um, no secret that it's lost a little bit of its radicality since the uh, mid 19th century. Uh, you've kind of brought a little vitality back to the genre by bringing a certain sense of uh, politics, I want to say, for lack of a better word, uh, in your work. What, uh, you know, is, you've made plain air, you are the man who made plain air radical. Do you, do you accept that title? I will. Uh, I mean, you know, throughout art history, it has been this like a certain wow factor you know there was a time when perspective was like a wow factor or light and shadow and so i guess that i mean maybe it was just a huge mistake god mixing politics and art i'm not sure but yeah there's the piece that i did it was a plain air bank of chase bank uh plain air of chase burning and then the the cops came and and uh this was like in 2011 and it was it was crazy so, 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 so basically, uh, as I recall the story, um, the police questioned you about making art, your free speech right, your, your fundamental First, First Amendment right to, to make art. You were, making a, you were out there making the painting like, like anybody would, and pardon the stereotype, but you know, grandma and grandpa out there on a doing, Sunday doing, yeah. their, doing their plain air painting, and you happen to do it of the architecture of this bank, yep. and um, this bank happened, you know, it was right during the financial crisis, or maybe just a, just a hair after it, right? Right, yeah, it was, it was 2011, you know, so that was eight, that was like th about three years after. After the big epicenter, after the implosion. The bailouts, which, uh, I don't know, I think some sort of multiverse spun off when Too Big to Fail became a real policy and, and we're kind of in a weird timeline now. Like, it's a total market distortion and 
And I think we're seeing the results in a distortion of our culture right now. Like, it's weird, you know. So, so uh, basically, the, they bailed out the banks instead of bailing out middle America. The assumption might have been that uh, the banks would then lend that money that they got. But th right. they could more or less just gave it out as bonuses, right? Um, pretty much. I mean, um, it's not... Uh, this whole concept of trickle down and I mean remember everybody did get like a little $600 check from George Bush uh, when when they first bailed out the banks but it's uh, like like I said I don't want to talk too much about politics to me the painting was just an expression of how pissed off I was so what had happened when the cop the cops questioned you you didn't get arrested for making a painting. nope no but you did get press attention I got press attention not when I when I did the painting, the cops in the street talked to me. They took my ID. They wrote up an incident report and all that stuff. It wasn't until three weeks later that I had two detectives come to my house and knock on my door and begin to ask me questions that it turned into a big media thing. Kind of scary. It was scary. So that was why I think that, the, that, it, that it took off the way it did. You know? So the coverage was, was very favorable to you. Yeah, frankly, it was favorable just, to me, but it, again, it didn't happen in the art section. It happened. It was in the. It was in, in the, the business. Section. It was in the business yeah, section. I know. <laughs> now, how many business people were like? Did did the you know just once again doing everything I can to just nail coffins into into any sort of possible art career I could have? I mean, literally biting the hand that feeds you. It was sort of a dumb move in many respects. Is the one percent though the only hand that can feed you? Um. I mean, it, it, it brings about an interesting conversation about the art world and what is the art world and who, who are in it and who, how it plays out. You know, I mean, obviously it's a place that you and I know that people can park large sums of money and oh, yeah. have it, you know, kind of interest free, retain its value oh, yeah. and, or even accrue value. A true value, beat um, inflation at the least. You know, you yeah. can't say that, that someone like Clement Greenberg does not continue to have influence because the, all of the artists that he blew up um, are continuing to be blue chip art. You oh, know? yeah. And so to, to this Even day, Morris it's like, Lewis and Gene Davis. And I love those guys. I mean, I was doing Morris Lewis y type of stuff when I was making video games. It wow. was like finish, fetish, poured, brush strokeless abstraction not well, well, the opposite of what I'm doing we're now. Kind of, is this an abstraction we're looking at no I see a horse this started something. off as an abstraction and it's something that I do where I feel like I'm trying to channel Turner here I'm definitely on the Turner side of of the different schools of painting and so like extracting something from chaotic brush strokes and movements and whatever so these start off as just I could do them in the dark or I could just wow. like rub it on the ground and, and you know, so then with the mind that one would use to like look at clouds and go, oh, I see an elephant, oh, I see a, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, I, you can just use that to, to say, well, I want to see a riot in this mess that I've made. So again, you're Like Turner would make an abstract painting with the intention of seeing a seascape in it. But he would do 10 at a time, in the dark, no clue, just like a drunk or who knows what. So he didn't even know what he was doing. You know, do, you so, think, do you think it was smart of the Getty when they had that Turner show to show all those unfinished ones? Absolutely. Really? I love it. Wow. I love that. I, that's why I love Degas, because Degas is someone who probably 70% of his work is unfinished. Really? Oh my God! He started so many things. That he no didn't UV finish. protection? Just kidding! Just kidding! He was a he was big on photography. That was that's a big dirty secret with a lot of these guys. Was really? Photographer Thomas Aiken's dirty secret? Wow. N uh, Norman Rockwell. He literally really? Norman Rockwell had a projector oh, and he literally said, "I hide it in the closet and I lock the door when guests come over because I'm ashamed that I use it, but it's the greatest tool that's ever been given." Yeah, to I artist. heard that Norman Rockwell used a projector. It was very. It was it was the day the but music. But his competition died. was using it. He had yeah, to do it. He had to do it. He had to do it. Yeah, but he did it better than anyone. They had an unfinished Norman Rockwell at the uh, art LA Art Fair. Oh really? Fascinating. I love unfinished paintings because it gives you it's like an X-ray into the procedure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How many how many paintings, uh, Alex Schaefer, in your lifetime? How many paintings have you finished? Oh my God. Uh, 
Hundreds? Hundreds? Thousands? I mean, not thousands. Millions? No, but if you counted drawings ah. as an objet d'art, which could be sold. What, what do you got against the letter C? Can you just uh, say it? An art object. An art object. <laughs> I do have thousands. I have pounds. Pounds? Of fucking <laughs> great drawings. Pounds I mean, let's make paper. some money, bro. <laughs> you know, it's like I feel like there's an engine that requires parts, okay? Like Picasso. Gertrude Stein, Vollard, okay? You got the dealer, you got the writer, you got the artist who's the fruit tree producing objects that can be sold. So I'm just kind of like, I'm missing a couple of parts. Or, or when I find a part, then I'm an asshole and I kind of like do everything and alienate. There, there's, and... There, every artist has a certain uh, a saboteur <laughs> element. Uh, so so you've, been, you've been around- I'm a master at self-sabotage. You, you've, been, you've been around the block. But you're getting better at, at, look, you showed up on, I will say this, he showed up on time. I showed up on what time. What are we looking at here? What the hell is this? This was another, uh, I did a whole series in 2006, 2007 of these, uh, I remember it was kind of, well, it was 2004, I think, and three when I was doing these. And it was whatever you were seeing bus bench ads for flipping houses. And oh yeah, just everyone owns three or four houses. Housing. Oh yeah. I was yeah. driving up towards Sunland and I just saw these weird neighborhood of houses way up a hill. And I drove up and started like doing sketches. And, uh, and then someone like is like, get the fuck out of here. We don't know who you are. So then I just kind of took a bunch of photos as I drove out of the neighborhood. And I did a series of these that was working a lot with texture. I was really starting to get more into the physical thickness of the paint. I mean, I've had to, I've had some bad stuff. I've had some things fuck me up, like a de Kooning quote really fucked me up for a long time. What was the de Kooning quote that fucked the you de up? The de Kooning quote was, don't do what comes easy to you. Don't do what comes easy to you? Yes. Really? So yeah. how many girls did you turn down that way? No, oh, I, had to, I had to do it. <laughs> um, so then I just completely moved away from figuration and plain air and and again some of this was during this 10 10 year time that i was working in video games when i was right out of art school so oh, I, okay. I worked for disney and i worked for sega and i probably um i worked for this company called insomniac games with with sega and i just was making gangs of money yeah. it was insane and making with, a lot of money um and so Con i just had a lot of time contributing to, to the do, downfall of the culture yeah Yes, Sega Genesis. Anybody out there, but the big hit that I was part of the team of was uh, Spyro the Dragon. Spyro the Dragon? Spyro the Dragon. Like for Spyro the Sega, Agnew? For the, uh, sorry, for the Sony PlayStation. Like, like Spiro Agnew? Spiro, yeah, Spiro the Dragon. Okay, now there's, there's like a, a, a different encounter. That was not the Chase Bank. Is that a that bank? Was, that's the downtown the Los bank. Angeles Federal Reserve. Oh, oh, oh geez. Oh, and then boy. then I did a chalk oh, protest. Oh, Alex, you're going to get us in trouble here. What's going on? Oh, the but cops? That's, that's, wow, did they confiscate your stuff? That was when I did a chalk protest and I got thrown in jail. You got thrown in jail for a chalk protest? Yeah, and protest. fully booked, dude. The full face scan, eye scan. And you know, when, when I walked through the police, uh, the, the precinct office, and I'm like, they threw me in the can for like 12 hours, wow. which sucked. Um, but they do this like, dude, on your eyes, and then a really slight photograph it's so high res on your face and then all these little like squares start appearing wow, and shit. facial recognition and then when i was walking from there they have a whole room full of cops on facebook they're all they're all just like doo, 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 looking at your profile it's like law offices have the same thing a whole team of wow. people that just are on facebook looking at whatever really? the fuck you, yeah it was weird wow social media well in that case i think i'll get rid of my nah yeah so yeah, I mean, I, I was, this was how I expressed my frustration. And you know, 2011, we still had f like four more years for a justice department to actually do something and move forward on the fraud and criminality, which brought about the need for bailouts to begin with. Um, so it's over now, like they fucking got away with it. We can say bad words cause we're like. Cause this is not family friendly TV. We got <laughs> kids. He just said fuck. Up. Yeah, I, um, so I was here. Hey, you want to get rid of the kids? You don't say fuck. You say, let's talk about neo-constructionist theory. Yeah. Oh yeah. boy. Yeah. So. No, but you know, like, um, just so wait. To, uh, you're a cop magnet. You're getting busted all the time. Why can't you just make peaceful, pleasant I art I for guess, people's walls? Dude, look at me. I have white privilege. Just okay. my very face. 
I've done things where I should have been, I mean, drunk, okay, where I should have not gotten off with what I got off. But they just like, eh, you're... You're just yeah. a drunk-ass white person mouthing yeah. off. But yeah. Yeah. So I guess with regard to protest and things like that, my, my opinions are changing, but, you know, I mean, I could use it to what, to try to, you know, there was a lot of traction that was happening at that time. Nothing, the, the, the systems of our government that were put in place to grab the ball and hand it off, like here we are expressing our frustration. Now you are appointed, you know, servants in government should do something, but they don't. And so that was been a learning curve for me. Well, we got four years of Trump ahead. What do you think? <sighs> you got 10 seconds. 10 seconds? We're, he's got four years. He's got 10 fucked. seconds. <laughs> Trump's fucked. Oh, yeah? It's a lose-lose. It's all, he, you know, he is, I, again, like I said at the beginning, I think he's the, the expression of the distortion of our markets. Wow. The phys, he, and literally, it took someone physically as, and, and mentally as repugnant as he is to just let it all out there for people to finally go, wow. This is the ugliness. This is the ugliness. He's the manifestation of wow. the ugliness. Okay, now listen, hear me out, because I don't want to be bashing anyone, but the media curates as much as it, as it, as it broadcasts fake news, okay? If we saw a, a gripping, horrifying video of grandmothers holding their sons who are holding their dying daughters in rubble, okay, we, every time that Obama had a drone strike for the past eight years, we would be livid and horrified. Ah, so the curation, the that curation That is an of, example of curated it's the, it's news. It's the choice of the other. That we're not outraged over that. All right. Well, but the fact that he is so obviously out, like, just generates outrage. The, the network censors have told me, your time's up. Just kidding, there's no network ah! censors here. But <laughs> it's always great talking to Alex. We, we could, Alex and I could probably gab about this for two hours. Yeah, so. maybe we'll have me so, on the show again. So we'll, 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 have to, uh, we'll have to get you live painting here one time. And I we, know, we I mean, I could it. totally just be, like, quiet do, and sketch. You could do portraits you know, if Eliza and stuff. never can't do it. All right, well, thanks for joining us thanks on again. Modern Art Blitz, Matt. ladies and gentlemen. Alex Schaefer will be back with Jennifer Feist and Sean Capone. Stay tuned.